Warming, soaring fuel and food prices and on and on it goes. But I've managed to find a tiny glimmer of hope, a community that's beating the 21st century blues, a place that gives people power a whole new meaning. There are no electricity or water bills, they grow their own food and recycle everything. They've simply unplugged. Once it was dismissed as just a hippie trippy dream. Now it's a great practical idea that's spreading around the world. And the good news is, it's painless. The good life with all creature comforts intact. Taos, New Mexico. Where the Rio Grande carves its way through as harsh a landscape as you'll find anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Out here in the desert, they're building homes that could change the way we live, how we eat, where we sleep, how we survive. Right on. <laughs> we can make a home, make its own electricity, harvest its own water, contain and treat its own sewage, uh, heat and cool itself, use byproducts of the world, uh, produce food <laughs> anywhere. And we can put a family of four in there and they don't need to do anything. Mike Reynolds is an architect who builds what he calls earthships. Totally self-sufficient homes out of garbage. Tires, beer cans, bottles, all the leftovers from an affluent society are put to good use. Mike Reynolds has been doing this for 35 years and now he's built a whole town from trash. You must have known you had a difficult message to sell. Yes, if you're gonna hold up a piece of garbage and tell people it's gold, you know, you, got, you better be prepared for some flack. <laughs> And everybody called me a fool and called me a fool and called me a fool and now recycling's the thing to do, you know. This is an amazing achievement. It comes at a time when we're struggling to deal with the effects of climate change, restricted water, rising fuel and power costs, even maintaining basic food supplies. We're not necessarily looking at trying to change the planet as much as trying to make it so more people can survive. Because things, things are changing, regardless of whether we want to accept it. I don't care if they accept change or not. I don't care if they accept global warming or what they call it or who caused it. I don't care about any of that. I care about how do we live through it. And that's what our ships are about, is living through it. This is pretty tough country. Scorching heat in the summer, below freezing and snow in the winter, and only about eight inches of rain every year. So if you can live off the grid out here, that is, not be connected to the power, the water or the sewer, you're doing pretty well. From the outside, these houses may not be everybody's cup of tea. But step inside and you may be pleasantly surprised. It looks hostile from the outside, but it's very comfortable on the inside. Oh, this is just a warm, um, bright, comfortable space. Kirsten Jacobson built this house herself. These are tires. There's tires all back in here, and then um, plants, the whole building, all the electricity in the building is from solar cells on the roof. Um, you could have a windmill as well, but I just have three solar panels on the roof that provide electricity for lights, um, TV, internet, phone, everything you really you, need. You're missing out on nothing. I, I, don't, I don't believe so. <laughs> um, I'm missing out on not paying a utility bill. Her home is warm in winter and cool in summer. And her only water is rainwater. Now this is almost like a tropical rainforest. I know, and in the high mountain desert where we get very little rain um, and it's very cold in the winter, we have banana trees inside the house. So all my shower water and sink water waters these plants and they thrive and they use up some of the water, but they also aerate and treat the water 
and I can flush the toilet with that water. Okay, so it's one big cycle of water. Right. All the water is used four times in the building instead of just once. And so we take eight inches of rain and multiply it times four. That's how we're able to live just off the catch water. And if we can do it here, you can do it almost anywhere in the world. Mike Reynolds is constantly working on his designs. The Phoenix is his biggest project yet. Out the back, you can see how these houses are put together. This is the like the tire I was pounding up there. Yeah. This is how hard they get, see? And they're swollen up, mm. and they're resilient. It's getting rid of something that we have mountains of that we don't know what to do with, and it's low tech. And this material is indigenous to the entire planet. If Taos is not your style, then maybe this is. On this small patch of Queensland's Gold Coast, they're also building entirely self-sufficient homes. It's the same principle, but instead of tyres and cans, it's earth and cement. These are the essentials. This is the backbone, the spine of the house, and this is what regulates the temperature within the house and keeps uh, thermal inertia so that it's when it's hot outside it's nice and cool and when it's very cold outside it's nice and warm in the, in the home. Chris Walton is developing the Eco Village at Corumban, a model for the way we could all live. We orientate our houses correctly. Uh, we insulate our houses well. We try and include the winter sun and exclude the summer sun. Do I have to throw anything out? Do I have to surrender anything? Well, we, we don't allow air conditioning in here because uh, our houses are very comfortable without air conditioning. Water? What do you do for water? All of the houses here are self-sufficient in water. Each house has its own rainwater tanks and the wastewater uh, goes to our uh, wastewater treatment plant and comes back as very safe recycled water for, for our yard usage and toilet flushing. You know, this is a fine example of um you can live uh, energy efficiently in luxury. Yes, it is. <laughs> um, yes, I mean, it's a beautiful, beautiful home. Claire Johnson really is doing it in style. Yep, this is a rammed earth wool, and it's made from stone from the Gold Coast Quarry, mixed with some small amount of cement and water. Beauty of it is that in the winter, the sun's rays hit the wool, and the wool absorbs the heat, so helps to keep the temperature warm in the evening. Wow, and it looks good too. Yeah, it looks fantastic, yeah, beautiful. <laughs> Claire's three bedroom, two bathroom home comes with all life's luxuries, including a sophisticated energy monitoring system. Um, so if we look at the electricity for today, and today we've made 5.7 kilowatts. That's the yellow graph, but we've only used 2.4. Oh, aren't you a good girl? <laughs> <laughs> it's a report card, basically. It um, is. Do you like it? Yes, I do. And here's the real bonus. Claire produces so much solar electricity, she feeds it back into the grid and gets paid for it. We're proud owners of a bill which actually says that we're $12.70 on credit. They owe you. They do owe us money because we've produced more power and sent more power back to the grid than we've used. Why haven't we done this before? I think we've all been a little bit asleep. Certainly past governments uh, have not uh, acted on their fundamental responsibility and I think in years to come we will look back uh, and judge that inaction and poor action as being criminal. All over the world from the deserts of New Mexico to the rolling hills of Somerset, England, people are coming up with their own unique solutions to the problems that confront us all. Ultimately, you've reverted to history. I suppose perhaps we have, yes. People had windmills or they had water mills to turn the machinery. Brian Shingler has owned this place for years, a water mill that dates back 1,000 years. But it was only when electricity prices started to soar a few years ago that he got the idea of replacing the old water wheel with the turbine to generate his own electricity. So it's all about the drop? Yes, it's about a five metre drop and it's about a half a cubic metre per second of water that is able to produce that power, about 10 kilowatts at the moment. That's not bad, is it? Well, it's enough to power 
10 or 15 houses, the average rate of consumption. Now the idea has caught on and Brian is part of a consortium of water mill owners who sell their electricity back to the power company. Brian makes a profit of £3,000. That's more than $6,000 Australian dollars a year. And this is how we start up. Look at that. So, so this is just like a, a big tap, letting the water in. And mills enough corn to feed his sheep. Wow. That's very good. It's been an amazing turnaround. Finally, rebels like Mike Reynolds have become the voice of reason for a desperate planet. You were laughed at, were, were you not, when you told your architectural colleagues? And well, what's more than laughed at, they said I was a disgrace to the architectural community. And since then, I've heard that many times. <laughs> that was just the first time you yeah, heard it. Yeah, <laughs> just the beginning. It must have irked you so many times, having to having to, you know... Refrain from killing people? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but now Reynolds' homes are being built around the world. And this would sit well in any place, in any community in the world. It wouldn't look out of place. Oh, it would look out of place. Yeah, my form of beauty is not necessarily globally accepted, <laughs> but... <laughs> In Holland, I'm making it brick. In Scotland, I made it stone. Uh, in Jamaica, I'm making it with verandas. And so I'm, I'm making it palatable. I'm starting to wise up onto that, that, that no matter how good something is, people will die before they'll use it. For years, Mike Reynolds was regarded as a hippie architect gone mad. Now his time has come. He still may be a hippie, but no one thinks he's mad anymore. Internal greenery? Yeah, that's the that's cleaning up your bathwater. I knew that it would happen. I mean, because uh, you could see it. You could see it 35 years ago. And now it's needed. So we're, you know, we're confident. We can do anything, anywhere. You know, we're even cocky. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Tom Steinford. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au as well as the 9now app.